This is a show about the battle for UFO truth. Now, when I say we have not discussed this beforehand, I mean it. Ray, did you get a chance to check this out at all? I did. I listened okay. to uh, part, part of an episode. I get the gist. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you get, get the, the gist. gist of it? All right, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to play some clips of it. But before that, I just want to know, what's your take on UFOlogy, UFOs, uh, UAPs? What are your thoughts on this? All right. All right, this, all right, this is going to be deep. This is just me being yeah. Great. I'm very deep. Uh, I'm a very simple guy, as you know. Here's how it is, Carl. This is my whole thing on UFOs, aliens, whatever. Is there stuff out there? Obviously, there is. Every time you look in the sky, all right, you see uh, at night, you see all the stars. That's like a that could be another solar system out there. So there's definitely some could life be. out there. <laughs> it is. There yeah. definitely is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's definitely life somewhere around out there. I I know. I'm assuming. That there is alien life out there. They know we exist, and they don't give a shit about us. Okay. They just look at us as nothing. They don't look at us as a threat. They look at us. We can't even get along with each other. How are we going like, to get along? all get along with each other and take care of someone else? We're literally, to them, um, just like mosquitoes or something. That's what wow. they look at. Like, we're, they look at us as like no threat to anything. See, I see mosquitoes as a threat. I actually I, I put up... Like screens and stuff around my pool because of mosquitoes. But I see what you're saying. So this is interesting. Like mosquitoes now. that can never bother them. If that right. makes sense. Mos- mosquitoes like, across the do. lake. Sure. All right. Yeah. So this is interesting. I didn't realize you were going to go in that direction. So why do you know that they know about us because they visited here? No, I'm just assuming. I, 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 hmm. Maybe they don't know about us specifically, but I'm sure there are things out there. That know of, they're just uh, aware of the uh, galaxy and universe. Yes. Okay, yeah, and they look I at see. us. If they do look at us, like they can barely get to the moon, they're they're not a threat to us. They're gonna be, they're gonna self destruct before they can even think about. Wait, wait, wait. Have we gotten to the moon, Ray? Uh, I was told we did. Okay, <laughs> my teacher told me we did. <laughs> that is so, true. That is true. So I have to say yes. All right, so George Knapp is this guy out of Vegas who's a reporter. He does a great job. He's done tons of reports on Area 51 and the different phenomena that surrounds ufology and everything that's going on with the UFOs. And then Jeremy Corbell. Now, I saw Jeremy Corbell on the Joe Rogan experience. He was on there with Bob Lazar. Now, Bob Lazar is a physicist who allegedly worked on alien spacecrafts at Area 51. I've seen the documentary that Jeremy made with Bob Lazar. He seems very credible. He talks a lot about the uh, reverse engineering that they're trying to do because of these fallen spacecraft. They're trying to get the technology from them. So this is what we're dealing with. All right. Just to set that up. And uh, we checked out the most recent episode of Weaponized and... This Before is how you get into it. Can you explain yeah. area? I mean, I know of area 51. Uh, mm-hmm. I know of it. So is that like just where any alien object? Cause I do believe there's probably like aliens might've sent a droid just to like, Hey, what's down there type thing. Sure. Um, but are they just sending it to area 51? <laughs> like that's where like the postal code address to go, or we just find it on earth and we put it in area 51. So, If I'm not mistaken, and gosh, I haven't studied this stuff in a while, but in 1947, there was a crash at Roswell. Yes, yes. And I believe that whatever crashed at Roswell was transferred to Area 51. Now, whether Area 51 was built around that or near there, I believe there was something that involved with that. But no, the spacecraft doesn't come to Area 51 to visit. That's just where <laughs> allegedly when we have captured whatever it be, whether it's species or aircraft, that's where we bring it to. We take it there. All right. Yes. It's like if you get a baseball card, you gotta take it to the PSA to get it rated. We take it to we take the alien not even, aircraft. Not even to close Area to 51. the right not even close to the right <laughs> analogy. Not even in the same ballpark. Get it? Yes, Not even in the ballpark. Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. So this is the way. This is the way. This, <laughs> this episode. Yeah. This is what you're dealing with. Mentally. No, I, I love is, it. This is, right. This is where I'm at. Honestly, I'm <laughs> honestly, I go through hundreds of suggestions. People send in suggestions. They emailed them in. They send them on Patreon. They put them in the Discord. We have old channel for review suggestions. I go through there. I look around. What's going to be interesting for people? When I saw this, 
And uh, Jared had actually sent in a few different UFO podcasts. I went, oh, I want to pick Ray's brain on this. I was okay. interested in, in what your take was going to be. So I'm glad you're here for this episode specifically. This this was uh, something I did on purpose. Let's put it that okay. way. Cal- calculated move on my part. So it starts off with uh, with this question. Jeremy, I'm going to call this the Michael Corleone edition. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. You know, we've been quiet for a while. Why are we doing this? You know, man, I missed you. All right. So we're off to a bad start. First of all, isn't it Michael Corleone? It's not Corleone, is it? Uh, Am I crazy? Corleone. Michael Cor- Corleone. Godfather, yeah. yes. All right. So they start off, they go, okay, why are we doing an episode right now? And they're like, well, because I missed you. I just wanted to shoot the shit. I'm like, uh-oh. So they don't have a lot to I talk think they're about. joking. This is just called banter, Carl. Come on, well, cut them a break. This is banter. Well, it's actually n- not a good sign for them that they uh, say, yeah, there's a lot of uh, issues going on in their community right now where people are kind of uh, upset with what's been going on. And I'll, I'll get into that here. We've been on a roll. You know, the UFO community in general, the topic in general has been on a roll since 2017, since that New York Times story kick things off and all the other things that have come out as a result of that. It's been uh, mostly a peak, but you know, this was going to come, it was going to happen that the, the dark empire strikes back and, and tries to dissuade the public, the media and Congress from taking this seriously. And they did a really good job. I mean, as we talked about, I think in our last episode, the last one of, of weaponized, this was a body blow, and it was serious, but it's not a death blow. It's not the end of, of everything. It happens. Do you see what George is saying right here? He comes out and he goes, all right, look it. A lot of this stuff has been discredited. A lot of people aren't believing in it anymore. This is a tough time for us who are trying to prove that there is extraterrestrial life visiting us. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of a, a dark period. So I was like, a weird way to start the show. I, I almost felt like... Maybe gloss over that or don't even mention it. Just get right into your stuff you want to talk about. Now he's letting us know there's doom. Plus, he brought up Empire Strikes Back, so a Star Wars reference, and he's got the George Lucas hair. I'm in. Okay, good. All right, so I'm we just in. needed this to be science fiction for you yes, to yes. start enjoying it. All right, I got to I gotta. – this is all science fiction. <laughs> no matter what comes out of this guy's mouth. It's I don't know. Be it's, uh, I don't know be about that. I, I, so I've uh, you didn't ask me the question back, so I'll just uh, give you this information. Okay. I've actually witnessed two different UFO events in my life. For real? For real? Yes. One of them, my wife and I were driving back from Toronto, and we both saw it plain as day in the sky on an afternoon, uh, no clouds in the sky, and uh, it was there for a while. The other one I witnessed myself over my house when I was coming home from band practice. Uh-oh. So, so I'm a balloon practice. Mandolin yeah, well, practice. I, that I had the six <laughs> string for that one, but uh, I do practice the mandolin from time to time. That is true. All right. So, what he's talking about is there was this Arrow report that came out. A A R O. So this is the Defense Department's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. They released a report detailing its review of nearly 80 years of reports on government offices and special access programs related to unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAP, a new term that was once referred to as unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Arrow has found no verifiable evidence that any UAP sighting has represented extraterrestrial activity, said the director. Arrow has found no verifiable evidence that the U.S. government or private industry has ever had access to extraterrestrial technology. Arrow has found no indications that any of the information was illegally or inappropriately withheld from Congress. The 63-page report provides conclusions drawn following an examination of historical documents and conclusions drawn by U.S. government programs that did work related to UAP dating back to 1945. Arrow assesses that alleged hidden UAP programs either do not exist or were misidentified authentic national security programs unrelated to extraterrestrial technology exploitation. We assess that claims of such programs are largely the result of circular reporting in which a small group of individuals have repeated inaccurate claims that they have heard from others over the period of several decades. So this is what they're responding to. And now, if you remember, it was about nine months ago that a couple of whistleblowers came out in front of Congress and said, we have definitely had altercations with extraterrestrials, with UFOs. And this was a big news story. 
And I want to bring this up because this new Arrow report that just came out pretty much put a damper on all of this. Like people in the ufology community were excited when this happened. And I'll just play the uh, NBC News report on this. Welcome back. Lawmakers on the Hill uh, today held a hearing on unidentified aerial phenomena, also known as UAPs or used to be known as UFOs, amid growing public interest about potential extraterrestrial life beyond planet Earth. The committee heard testimony from three witnesses today. One was a former Navy commander. One was a former Navy pilot. Both of them claim to have seen UAPs, as well as a former intelligence officer who goes a step further, and he alleged that the government is concealing a, quote, multi-decade crash of a UAP and a retrieval program. Take a listen to more of what this person had to say. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked Okay, so Ray, this was a bombshell. Do you remember this happening? No. That's what's crazy about it. This came out. I was talking about it when it happened. I thought it was a big deal. And everyone just yawned and moved on. And they're like, okay, whatever. And so now this new report from Arrow comes out and it says, yeah, this is all bullshit. There's been no programs. Anyone who says there is is lying. And so these guys are coming out on their show and they're going, hey, get, 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 get. let's get back to the point where we were all thinking that UFOs were real because those people, those whistleblowers were in front of Congress talking about it. Yeah, this sounds... Real. Also, though, all right, let's say it's real and it sounds like it is. Well, this press conference is real, yes. Yes. Um, but, like, I, people are getting hysteria over everything. I don't know if I want every idiot getting hysteric over this. Uh, y- you know what I mean? Like, let's, it's an incident. There's obviously something there. It's like we don't need to freak out. I, I feel like I'm the mayor in Jaws right now. Yeah, like, hey, summer's coming. We don't want everyone to be scared to go in the ocean. This Correct. town makes a lot of money. Let's just chill out, not act like it's a big deal. Yeah, let's so, not act like it's it's a flu that came over from China that we have to shut down our lives for two years for. I agree with you. This isn't a big deal. It's just proof that there's extraterrestrials visiting our planet. Yeah, you know, it just kind of disproves all religions. But other than that, no, it's great. Okay, so these guys are talking about how this recent report that came out is bumming everyone out. Yeah, I mean, even now, which a lot of people out there in the UFO universe think is a down period, there's no, there's not much going on. There's a hell of a lot going on. Even in what is perceived as a lull, there's a hell of a lot going on that's important. And, uh, you know, don't give up. There's a lot to talk about. There is progress being made. Not all of it is obvious, uh, but we're going to go over some of those items today. Sounds like they're trying to convince themselves, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're not going to have the answers of, where it came from or you know it's not like there's a gps inside it like hey we came from here or that we'd understand whatever i don't well, well i don't so think what that's what they're trying to there? get to the bottom had, of per se but what was in this ufo you said that there was some type of life form well that's Is what they that, said I, I didn't say that you just heard yeah, the person but, yeah, reporting on it the guy say um non-human the, biologics he calls it non-human bio now i'm like what what, what is it so like an alien, uh, like, animal? Or, like, just an well, alien? Like, he, yeah, I mean, a life, a life form. It's a life form. This, that that was, was piloting an aircraft that was in our our uh, airspace. It's, it's crazy. All right, let's get damn. over that. Let's move past that, right? Because That's I, a big I, deal. I'm, it I'm is. Curious, I agree. Is this? I'm with you on that. I think it's a big deal, too. Do they but give a shit every not. time? Every time, like, there's just a new animal born at the zoo is a big deal. This is an alien object, like, uh, alien life form that's here, you know? Okay, it's, so it, let me explain. And it's on the news? Right, so let me explain how they discredited all of this. So there's this program called Kona Blue, and the Department of Homeland Security was actually in charge of this program, and they just recently released declassified documents about Kona Blue. Now, the program was set up to study and exploit UFO technology back in 2011, but it was never funded. So it, it never actually happened. 
So the whole point of them declassifying this is to say, hey, these guys who got up in front of Congress, they're claiming that they're part of Kona Blue. We never even funded that. So they're lying. This this never happened. That, that was the whole point. This is what these guys are talking about. But you say, shouldn't we be excited about this? There's someone else who's very excited about it that I think is of note. But um, that was a proposed special access program that was supposed to really go forward into studying the UFO phenomenon and associated phenomena. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because in in your book, that proposal is everything but the name is in your last book with Dr. James Lekatsky and Dr. Colin Kelleher. Before we go there, your buddy Kirk, who lives on Kona, who is this? This is this is a okay. You're outing him as a UFO guy. This is Kirk Hammett from Metallica. Metallica. You hear that, right? Kirk Hammett from Metallica is excited about this shit. Should, he's all I in. Thought he was, I thought he was all worried about Ticketmaster. Now he's oh, worried no, about that's, this. Yeah, that's decades ago. Wow, you're way behind in the news here. Yes. Do you know who else is really big into UFOs and stuff from bands? Remember uh, Tom DeLonge from Blink One Eighty Two? Yeah, yeah. He became a UFO researcher full time. Where's he? He should be studying this stuff. I think Blink-182 got back together. But no, he did a lot of research on this. He he put together a lot of shit. So I thought that was fun because the guy's like, By hey, way, isn't your friend Kirk into this? He's like, yeah, all right. You got me. Kirk Hammett's into I talk to Kirk about this shit all the time. It's kind of fun. Blink-182, their music does not age well. Like you don't think so? Men, yeah, middle-aged men singing about the girl that broke up with them like, uh, mm. during the summer. Well, you know, I, I, all that music that uh, appeals to people in high school and college doesn't age well. Green Day does The topics right. don't make Green sense. Green Day still is all right. You think right. so? Yeah. I think they're fine. They, But Blink-182 is the one where it's like, ah. I all that po- All that pop punk stuff. See, I, I'm, I don't know. I listen to Pennywise and No Effects. So when that pop punk stuff started getting popular, I was like, yeah, be- that's, for, that's girl punk rock. Weezer aged all right. Oh, God, Weezer has some terrible albums. That's not the point. The point is that they explain the reason why... Oh, we're talking about aliens. I forgot. The huh? reason why they declassified <laughs> this information, Ray, <laughs> is to discredit the whistleblowers. What they said about Kona Blue is these witnesses who came to Arrow, quite a few of them are confused. They're telling us about seeing crash retrievals, reverse engineering programs, and what they're really mentioning is Kona Blue. That is total bullshit. Not one witness came to them and told them, I saw UFOs stashed in a hangar run by a program called Kona Blue because the program never existed. They had no budget. They had no hangars. They had no buildings. They had no staff. It never existed. So there's no way in hell a witness came forward and told Arrow, yeah, I I got all this information from Kona Blue. It's bullshit. So these guys are frustrated, and I actually understand their frustration because, as you saw, I, I see, I saw you get excited about this. Here are these guys who work for the government, who are just like, "Hey, we know shit about aliens. We're not telling you, Congress, but we're working on stuff. It's all top secret and classified." And so everyone's like, "Oh, cool! Right? What's that kind of stuff?" And then these guys come out and they go, "Ah, those guys don't have any credibility. They're lying. This is a program that never got funded. It's not a thing." So these guys are pissed about, it. like, "What the fuck? That's not cool." Well, what does uh, Fred Durst think about all this? Because I, I ha- thought Limp Biscuit was that great. <laughs> I got I to gotta ask him. I think I'm going to see Corey Feldman open for Limp Biscuit this summer. So uh, I was joking. I was if just I get trying a chance to, to ask him. I, know, I get it. I get it. I understand. All right. So then this is a weird thing because this guy, George. But also, also um, before you move on, though, yeah. let's, let's face it. That's everything. In Congress, there's so many other things like how to make food better. So they don't give a shit about that. It's like, it's like, all right, it's getting missiles to send overseas to. Um, it, yeah, those those it, are their donors. It's all like a, all in military those, stuff. Th- those are their donors, right? That's where yeah, they get their money from. So, and if we had term limits, they wouldn't have to raise money all the fucking time. Yeah, it's and, a very uh, simple solution to this that'll never happen. It's fun. Kona Blue. That's a good name for a band. It's not bad, or a beer. I could see. A, yeah. I could see me ordering a Kona Blue Light, maybe. Kona Blues is sounds cool refreshing. Name. Yeah, sounds yeah. refreshing. No, the government's good at naming shit. They're they're always <laughs> good at that. So one thing they're good at, they must have a team on it. All right. So for a reporter, I thought this was a weird thing for George Knapp to uh, to say on this one. Do you, do you think that's a big conspiracy, or what do you think? No, I, I don't, and I don't. I haven't asked him directly. He has not given me a response to it, but I got a general sort of a general sense. So that's a weird thing. 
Uh, I haven't asked him, but um, he hasn't responded. I, I have a general sense. Like, wouldn't you say, I don't know, or you would ask the person and get the answer before you report back. It just seemed like a bad answer on well, this I mean, one. Essentially, that's my podcast. I don't actually get correct information. I just, yeah. I just turn on the recording. And I expect like better out of George Knapp. That's my point, right? <laughs> Precisely. Okay, let's talk about something that you enjoy, comedy. So apparently, John Oliver, are you a fan of John Oliver? Yeah, I haven't seen him in a long time, but yeah. Me neither. I kind of dropped off. He got preachy. but So he apparently put out this UFO special, and uh, they want to talk about that. I didn't agree with everything he said. I mean, they kind of made some joke about, you know, the drone swarms and that kind of thing. But at least they covered it. And it's being talked about in uh, pop media. Which Did you see it? I haven't seen it. I've been told about it. I saw they were teasing it. People on UFO X, UFO Twitter were saying, oh, here it comes. It's going to be bad. And then people who watched it sent me some notes saying, you're in it. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> So George was in this, and he still hasn't seen it yet. Ray, I don't know about you, but if I'm in like a documentary about UFOs, I'm watching that shit immediately. I, I'll pay the extra money. I don't care. Uh, in his defense, man, like there's so many podcasts that talk about you and me. Do you watch when they talk about that's, us? That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like I don't. <laughs> that's I a good don't. point. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You're right. If this guy just thinks he's getting trashed, he's probably just like, I don't need to watch any of that. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're making you're making a good point there. So I like how Jeremy is just like, okay, they can they goof on us, but at least they're talking about UFOs. Like he's very optimistic. He's like, so John Oliver's on there to goof on all of us who think that UFOs are real, but they're talking about the subject. That's a good thing, right? Doesn't think it's bad publicity. Yeah. Well, the other thing John Oliver can also do in his jokes. I mean, I've obviously I haven't seen it. He could kind of say whatever because I don't know the backstory. Well, right. You get what I'm saying? So he can yes. do a setup anyway and manipulate his words to come to what he wants the end result to be. So he could set it up to make this George guy look like an idiot. And like George is like, all right, he just took what I said out of context. Like, I'm, right. I'm sure there's a lot of that. Welcome he is good comedy, at that. People do that. Yeah. He is good at that. John Oliver is for sure. But I thought this was an interesting take that he had, uh, having not seen it, obviously. But I like John Oliver. I like that show. It's funny. It's thoughtful. Uh, when I heard that they spent like a year working on a UFO special, I thought, well, that's great. But a year isn't really enough time to get your head around it. Um, you know, no matter who you are. I have to say, he spent a year on it. That seems like a lot to me. I was impressed by that. Like, they spent a whole yeah. year researching this shit for this show. Now I want to watch it. Sounds like they probably have some good information, but according to uh, George there, he's just like, oh, one year is all you spent looking this shit up? What do you, What could you possibly know? Yeah. yeah. So well, they did like, their due I, diligence. But I do get what he's saying. Like, this is the one thing he cares about. At least there's people now, it's being brought to attention. Maybe someone's going to look into it more because they hear of this Kona Blue. Maybe. Corona, Corona Blue? That's I don't know. I don't know that John Oliver was talking about Kona Blue. I'm not sure that that, I think he was just talking about UFO research in general. I don't know. I haven't watched it either. I, I do want to check it out, though, because I'm interested in this kind of stuff. Okay. So this is fun because as you guys are noticing, this show is boring AF. It's just two guys having a conversation, but not even really having a conversation. A lot of it is just one guy talks for a long time and the other guy talks for a long time. I, I'll show you an example of how that works out. But I thought this was an interesting thing to uh, to do on the show. It's or over a over hundred unknown units that were swarming 10 Navy warships in 2019 off the West Coast of California. We provided thermal footage. We provided IR. We provided radar. We provided deck footage. We provided witnesses that were firsthand testimony of active military that were there. We did all of this, I think, in episode two of Weaponized. And everybody should go back to episode two of Weaponized and watch that. I love that idea. It's just like, all right, look at guys, this episode's really boring, but we used to do really good stuff. We used to have some really cool footage. It was See interesting. My stuff. Yeah, See yeah, my, go back yeah, to episode two. It's it's really incredible stuff. Now you sound like Weezer. Don't listen to the last two albums. Yeah, go yeah, back. Blue, Blue Album and Pinkerton. That's all you Pinkerton, need to know. Pinkerton, man. Come yeah. on. The Green Album, it was pretty good. The Green Album was fine. You I'd like to like say. Pipe? Come on. It's a good course, song. Of course. Great song. I'd like to say <laughs> when we first discovered Patrick Michael on WTP, it was great. Go back to episode 142. Listen to that one. If you're yeah. bored with this, we used to have a really good show. That's a weird tack to take. I don't know. 
All right. So then uh, this is what I'm talking about where Jeremy Corbell enjoys the sound of his voice. He could go on and on and on and on. And what you're going to see here is George is watching him talk and then decides to just start writing notes down. He's not even paying attention. Was he, you know, he talks about the Langley incursions, and this is important. You've got a military area being um, penetrated by these unknowns, and they can't find them. But he also brought us back in history, and he talks about how some of these were transmedium, the footage you and I obtained and released um, in 2019. So you notice how George is looking down and writing notes while he's talking. My guess is that he knows that Jeremy's going to go on for a while. And it's like, all right, the next thing I want to talk about is this. Let me write it down so I don't forget, which is probably a good strategy on his part. I would yeah, imagine. And, and you know he's you know he's an old man because like he's doing it with a pen and paper. He's not like putting it into in his iPhone notes. Right. He's, he's like not typing with thinking. one finger like Sutter and yeah. John. He's not doing that. All right, so this I found annoying. I hate. They're talking about this article that came out on the Hill. By the way, look how nice George's hair is, dude. He's looks fucking good. crushing it. Yeah, it looks like a painting almost. Yeah. They really got the brush strokes. Silver Fox. So I encourage people to read that article by Merrick in the Hill because it was really illuminating. Yeah, he does some really good work. I fucking hate shows that give me homework to do. Can you summarize it for me? I'm not going to go read an article. I'm listening to your show. Just let me know what the gist of it, please. I don't want a show that gives me more things to do to understand the show. It's too much. Dude, I hate homework. I hate it. (laughs) (laughs) It's my least favorite thing. (laughs) All right. So then George has has written some books, and uh, he's going to talk about one of the books that he wrote. And it sounds like nobody cares about it. The public is always crying for more data. We need more hard data. We wrote an entire book filled with hard data called uh, Initial Revelations, the follow-up to Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. And it goes case by case, pulls these incident reports from the data warehouse, a lot of them from the 50s and 60s, long before drones were available to the general public. These are not drones, but these cases were significant. They were well-documented. They are inexplainable. In some cases, they they have severe national security implications. In some cases, the witnesses had severe uh, medical effects, harmful effects, good cases, pre-drone era, all kinds of technical and engineering data, and the world largely ignored it. I mean, there it is. You're always crowing about wanting more data. There it is, and uh, people aren't paying attention to it. Guys, I wrote a really good book. Why aren't you reading my book? It's got all this stuff in it. It's really cool. No one's buying it. How come? That's, it's good. That's what I say with my old comedy albums. I already put yeah. that out there. And like, Guys, I, check it out. It's I, great. Everyone wants to ignore this data. All this everyone data Everyone wants I to created. laugh at jokes. I wrote jokes. Why don't you laugh at my jokes? They're there. Yes. You can get them. Go check out mine. Come on. All right. One of my favorite things about, like, any of these conspiracy type shows, it doesn't have to be about UFOs per se, but any type of information they can get through playing the phone game, they're very happy to report back on. And here's an example of that. So look, this brings me back to those um, text messages or whatever from from our pal, uh, Christopher Mellon. One of the things that was written, he has this inside guy who's basically like infiltrated the crash retrieval program, it sounds like, and he's reporting back to Chris, and it says, right now, we haven't gone that far back. We're dealing with the recovered UAP that landed in Kingman, Arizona in the 50s. We're vacuuming up info as gets as so-and-so gets read in. We now know the management structure and security pro- control system and ownership of the crash retrieval. We also know who recovers landed or crashed UAPs and under what authorities. We also know that a still highly classified memo by a secretary of the U.S. Air Force in the 1950s is still in effect to maintain the cover on UAPs. I just thought this was like the coolest because they're talking about direct knowledge of UAP crash retrieval programs. I mean, that's that's a bombshell, that, that, that text that came out, right? So he, what he literally just said right there, and he's very excited about this information that they're looking at on a Reddit page or something. But what he's saying is that he's in a text thread with a guy who has a guy who's on the inside somewhere. 
Like, this is like fourth hand knowledge that we're now getting. It's like, well, it must be true that if you know a guy who knows a guy, I, I got to imagine he probably has all the info. Well, also, like, they're discussing stuff that happened in 1950s. Don't you think the aliens, like, have upgraded? Like, who cares about their old technology? That's like trying to figure out an Apple computer from 1982. Interesting. Like, let's, well, let's let's look. All right, let's let's explore that am, am I an idiot? a little bit. Am I, am, am well, let's I, explore I, that. I am an idiot. I take it let's, back. Let's, let's explore that. So, Ray, let's let's say that we were able to get um, people to the moon in 1969. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A, a, an amazing feat, and thank you for all the um, female minorities who did the math to make that happen. So, let's say that that is uh, is what happened. These people who came to the U.S. in the the or the U.S. The, to Earth in the fifties had the technology to travel across galaxies to get here. Sounds like pretty impressive tech, right? That's I would just impressive. like, yeah, I would just throw it out. Probably, even though it might be old for them, like it's pretty cool for us. It'd be yeah. like, all right, it'd be like, let's say you took a time machine, you know, Back to the Future style. You go back to nineteen fifty five, and you have a Game Boy, right. the original Game Boy, a black and white Game Boy. Every fucking kid is going to be so stoked about playing that Game Boy. Now, do you care about the first Game Boy? I don't. I don't want to play it at all. Ah, it still holds up. I'll do some Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tetris. You got me with Tetris. Oh uh, yeah, I'll sit on the can and play some Tetris. What do you What do you want me to do? It's. Uh... Have you never taken an improv class in your life? <laughs> <laughs> my yes and yeah, my yes yeah, and. No, you're fine. Who are these podcasts? W A.